The Stone Talon Mountains are a series of peaks that sit west of the Northern Barrens, south of Ashenvale and north of Desolus. The mountains are supposedly the ancestral home of the Harpies, although their numbers have diminished with the upheaval in the area. Stone Talon Peak, the biggest peak in the area, has long been a holy spot for both the Night Elves and the Torrent. The Night Elves originally maintained a barrow and a glade at the summit, but the region has since fallen under siege by a malevolent entity. The mountains farther south are less wooded, however some patchy evergreens exist in select locations like the Great Wood Vale. Windshire Crag has been ravaged by years of logging by numerous forces, leaving the air filled with soot and contaminating the area's water with oil and garbage. The Night Elves have many holdings, while the Torn have a town at the centrally placed Sunrock Retreat and the Darkspear Trolls have a hamlet farther south at Malakajin. The Horde and Lions also maintain stations at numerous battlefronts across the mountains. The mountains are home to animals such as kobolds, spiders and eagles, while Charred Vale spreads down to the sea and harbors numerous exceptionally deadly black dragons and elementals. Stone Talon Mountains have historically been the location of Kalimdor, where Night Elves and Torrin reside and creates a barrier between the two peoples. Stone Talon Peak has long been a holy spot for the two races and was traditionally the home of the immortal oracle, the creature who saw the threads of destiny as they were woven by the Earth Mother. During the Third War, the mountains contained human and orcish camps, and it was at the Stone Talon Peak that the Alliance and the Horde momentarily cooperated in order to combat the Burning Legion. The region south of Stone Talon Peak hosted Razorman Quillbore, a group of centaur and a gang of harpies that abducted local wyverns that defiled the spring blessed by a loon. According to Morrogal, there is something horrible beneath the mountains. The trolls of Malakajin dispatched horde adventurers to strike at the keepers and dryads inside at the Stone Talon Peak. The Tauren of Sunrock Retreat and the Night Elves of Stone Talon Peak sent adventurers to cope with different dangers within the area. Meanwhile, Sis Physics at Windshire Crag seeks to strike right at the heart of the Venture Company local squad, the leprous gnome Garenzo Wrenchwhistle, and in a small camp nearby, Kayla Shadowspear and Gaxum Rust Fizzle coordinate the Alliance resistance amid the Craggy's Crags, with special goals at the surrounding goblin invaders and the creatures of the Shard Vale. After the arrival of Deathwing ravaged the entirety of Azeroth, the Stone Talon Mountains were transformed in various spots. The Shard Vale, although fully healed by druidic efforts, gained a massive spire of lava thrusting from its southern end. Stone Talon Peak came under siege by the Old God's troops, ruining the land, killing the fauna and corrupting the sons and daughters of Cenarius. Meanwhile, Stone Talon also became a key theater of conflict in the Alliance Horde War. Overlord Krongard displayed the extreme ruthlessness of Garrosh Hellscream's Horde, murdering a glade of innocent druids and students unconnected with the Alliance for suspicion of being linked with the Alliance. These events would foretell Garrosh's brutal raid on Theramore Isle. According to Elder Sarathna, there is an old evil in Stone Talon. The charred veil in the Stone Talon Mountains became a venue for a mega event. The Hidden lured and attacked Aromar Thorn and his allies in the North Watch Expedition base camp, culminating to Aram's arrest and the murder of the dryad Terindarella. Macassa Flintwill and the others buried her in the valley under the base camp. It developed into a large tree called Forever Tree. Almost a year later after the base camp attack, Aram and his pals reconnected by the tree, saying that they would meet again yearly. Macassa escorted her pals to the charred Vale's coast where her ship, the Dryad, was parked and waited for them to start on their next adventure. After the Fourth War, Horde sources indicated that the Sentinels in Stardust Spire destroyed every siege weapon the Horde sent down from the Stone Talon Mountains. The standard questing experience for both sides brings them into Stone Talon via the Talon Deep Pass in the mountains in southern Ashenvale. The Stone Talon Mountains lay between the woods of Ashenvale to the north and the desolate Desolus to the southwest. The highest summits of the Alps are richly wooded with evergreens, while the forest thins with decreasing height. The logging of the Adventurer Company, the Horde and the Alliance has further depleted the forest, with clear cutting in and around Windshire Crag. The mountains feature Murkfallon Lake, which historically was a nesting location for wyverns, but is presently being dredged by goblins of the Horde. Battlescar Valley is a crucial battlefront between the Horde and Alliance. Charred Vale, once a lush and picturesque place, is now a dismal ruin full with fire elementals and black dragons. According to Rexar, it is used to take days to navigate the dense woods that originally capped the mountain's rugged summits. The mining and lumber activities of the Venture Company left every cliff desolate. After the goblins, lava flows and raging wildfires occurred, which devoured whatever that left. There are neither instant dungeons nor PvP battlegrounds in Stone Talon Mountains. Stone Talon Mountains are home to numerous characters of importance. From Kromgar Fortress, Overlord Kromgar aims to push the Alliance out of Windshire Kirk. As Windshire Hold, Lord Falomir supervises the Alliance effort, while Fort's commander Valon defends against the Horde from the north 
Northwatch Expedition Base Camp. At Thaldera Overlook, Master Thaldera strives to safeguard his druid pupils, while a Cliffwalker post, the Hive Chieftain, Cliffwalker, and General Grebo fight about how to manage the Alliance druids established nearby. The Horde Campaign Chapter 1 The Fold Fresh from their triumph at Silverwind Refuge, the Horde proceeded to move towards the Stone Talon Mountains under the command of Overlord Kromgar. The Horde adventurer brought new supplies to the Fold and then started assassinating Night Elf Scouts in the region while seeking for a missing engineer. While doing this, the adventurer unearthed an alliance plot to assault Kromgar Fortress directly and was told to carry these blueprints to Kromgar personally. Kromgar praised the adventurer and granted them a field promotion of sergeant. Chapter 2 Kromgar Fortress Overlord Kromgar instructed the adventurer to assault the adjacent Northwatch camp and murder its commander Marshal Paltro to weaken the Alliance soldiers. The adventurer scavenged pieces from the camp and was able to utilize them to restart the shredder which devastated the Alliance ground soldiers. However, as thin as the Alliance infantry was getting, the Alliance forces possessed an air force of gnomish flying machines poised to demolish its stronghold from the air. Kromgar instructed the adventurer to help the goblins with developing anti-air defenses for the imminent bombardment. The mine underneath the castle had mistakenly erased several earth elementals, which the adventurer attained before returning with the essential pieces. The onslaught had already started, but the adventurer was able to employ a now functional anti-air battery to fire down the gnomish air forces, leading the alliance to retreat back. For their service, Kromgar elevated the adventurer to legionnaire. With Kromgar fortress safe for now, Kromgar ordered the adventurer to help Malakajin to the south, besieged owing to the alliance's recent destruction of honor stand in the southern barons. Chapter 3 Malakajin Upon arriving to Malakajin, the horde adventurer heard that the alliance had gone into an alliance of convenience with the Grim Totem and that their combined forces were overwhelming the horde's lines, with which Dr. Jin Zil presented a bold solution voodoo to shift the tide of war. The adventurer acquired the appropriate regions for the ritual while enslaved a neighboring kobold tribe to serve as cannon fodder. With the supplies obtained, the adventurer went about utilizing the voodoo to boost the horde's forces while commanding the kobolds to assault the alliance flank. These actions ended the siege and the adventurer returned to overlord Kongar with the joyful news. Kongar advanced the adventurer to champion for their committed service. Chapter 4 Cliffwalker Post With the siege at Malakajin shattered and the assaults on Kromgar fortress unsuccessful, Overlord Kromgar instructed the Horde adventurer to send balloons carrying the bomb for the adjacent goblin complex, the Sludge Works, to be refueled on his journey to its ultimate destination at Cliffwalker Post. While waiting for the refueling efforts, the adventurer killed out of the Night Elf spies in the region and removed the wyvern colony that was presenting a danger to the mission. When the refueling was accomplished, the adventurer transported the bomb to its ultimate destination. Upon arriving to Cliffwalker Post, the adventurer discovered Kromgar's Lieutenant General Grebo in a heated debate with the Toran leader of the hamlet, High Chieftain Cliffwalker. Grebo said that the Horde received knowledge that the Night Elves were keeping a weapon of mass this devastation at Thaldorar Grove and that because of this, the Horde needed to deploy the bomb to wipe out the Grove before the Alliance could use the weapons against them. Cliffwalker, however, claimed that there was no such weapon that the Grove was only a training center for Druids, further stating that the Grove wasn't even linked with the Alliance and that if the general would postpone the planned assault for a little time, he could prove it. Rebo hesitated about launching the bomb, but ultimately ordered the adventurer to join in the assault of the adjacent Thaldora Overlook already begun. Cliffwalker requested the adventurer to see his son in the grove to find out the truth. The adventurer discovered the druids in the grove in a state of panic and upon traveling to the top of the old tree in the middle found Cliffwalker's son dead with the insignia of General Grebo gripped firmly in his dead hand. When the champion returned to Cliffwalker with proof of Grebo's deceit, he and his wife wept out in sadness for their deceased son and faced Grebo with the adventurer. Though Grebo was overwhelmed and fell to the three of them, Masha Cliffwalker concerned that now they would be punished for treason and begged with the adventurer to reveal the reality of the event to Kromgar. Kromgar responded angry at the news and ordered the adventurer to meet him in Cliffwalker Post, where he proceeded to burn the settlement to the ground. The adventurers promoted the general for their deeds. Kromgar compelled Cliffwalker and the adventurer to watch as they set the bomb off and decimated Thaldura Grove before their eyes. Just as the bomb landed, the doorway from Orgrimmar emerged and the war chief Garrosh Hellscream personally went through the portal and addressed Kromgar about what he had done. Kromgar assured Garrosh that he was merely following instructions. Garrosh questioned him if he had instructed Kromgar to slaughter innocents and ruin in the same lands he was supposed to capture for the Horde's gain. Kromgar, dreading with wrath of the war chief, cowered in terror as Garrosh lectured him on the concept of honor he had learned in Northland from Varok Sarfang. Garrosh warned Kromgar that his acts had brought enormous humiliation to the Horde and to the Orcs as a nation. 
Garrosh then proceeded to remove Krumgarf's leadership and threw him down a mountain, killing him in the fall. Garrosh then turned to the adventurer, thinking the adventurer involved in Krumgarf's deeds. However, immediately before Garrosh was to kill the adventurer as well, Chieftain Cliffwalker stood out in the adventurer's behalf, stating that they attempted to stop Krumgar, imploring that Garrosh show compassion. Garrosh was taken aback by the chieftain's behavior and freed the adventurer. Visibly affected, Garrosh indicated that the adventurer's power would be most required now in Desolus or the Southern Bears, and went back to Orgrimmar. Stone Talon's top remains green and lush, while most of the remainder of the land had been deforested or otherwise devastated. Certain portions of the country are now inhabited of elementals, harpies and other dangerous monsters. The biggest risk to the summit, however, comes from goblins. The Venture Company progressively burns down the last trees and extracts the remaining resources from the soil. If this trend continues, Stone Talon might soon become as much as a wasteland as Desolus in the south for the barons in the east. Druids and shamans take a hard stance here, doing all they can to stop the devastation of nature, but the conflict between the Alliance and the Horde prohibit the Night Elves and the Torn from working together successfully to halt the goblin activities. Many of the Torn still maintain the naive expectation that the Venture Company can be reasoned with, and this idea inhibits development. The major source of action here is around the goblins destroying the forests, but other options for the adventure abound in the mountains as well. Stone Talon Mountain and survived the sundering. However, the catastrophic events irrevocably changed the terrain, producing huge gorges and valleys within the mountain ranges. The indigenous Torn erected a camp south of Murkfallon Lake, based atop old ley lines, probably owing to these ley lines that the elementals are attracted to the region surrounding Chard Vale. The arrival of the other races is a recent phenomenon. The goblins found the territory a good site to collect timber and minerals, and the bulk of their present night elf presence in the mountains exists only to halt growing deforestation. While the night elves had colonies in the mountains in ancient times. Only the druids stayed there continually throughout the years, sleeping securely in their barrow burrows. The goblins of Stone Talon are among the best engineers of their species, and their innovation have enabled them to remove enormous portions of the forest in a few short months. This initiative attracts ire from the night elves and Torn equally, who view the deforestation barbarous and hazardous. The night elves find sanctuary atop Stone Talon Peak, preserving the refuge with the aid of dryads and caretakers of the grove, while the rest of the Torn assume a similar defensive position. Grim Totem tribe fights back at against the goblins. Rumors abound that the Grim Totems ready to use severe steps to eradicate the goblins from their realm, including the employment of forsaken made poisons. Clearly, if these poisons are overused, they may wreak as much havoc as the goblins. For all the intellect the goblins possess, they may have yet to comprehend politics, and it's true on an internal level as well as in the outside world. The trading princes have lately produced issues for the Venture Company, and it is becoming more probable that the goblins will turn on each other shortly. Recently, legends have developed about a large complex of tunnels under the top, which functioned as the home for some type of oracle or sage. The name Medivh has been suggested, although the odds of his remaining in the caves here appear to be small, but still a possibility. Mystery profit came from the caves under Stone Talon, declaring that the world must prepare itself for a new peril. The sage advocated for the death of the Forsaken, on the grounds that they would be the ones to usher in the next arrival of the Burning Legion, and maybe Sargeras himself. He dispatched heroes on a series of anti-forsaken missions, but the heroes researched the situation closely, revealing that his sage was really an operative of Balzanar, the brother of the dreadlord Fairy Mathras. Balzanar escaped his death at his brother's hands, and has planned his retribution against Sylvanas ever since. The sage was obviously only one tiny part of his plan. The Stone Talon Mountains are along the western coast of Kalimdor, south of Ashen Vale, and north of Desolos and Mulgore. They are often the most often utilized entry to the mountains, however, is the trail from the barrens in the east. The mountains were at one time covered with lush woods, but the Venture Company's expedition and mining activities turned most of the scenery to dusty barren valleys and dismal cliffs. The only section of the mountains that preserves its previous magnificence is the top itself, which is safeguarded by the Night Elves. There is a massive river, the Blood Fury, as well as two enormous lakes, Merc Fallon and Crackpool. The goblin-dominated mountains feature new few significant towns, although the Night Elves, Torn, Trolls and Harpies each claim a tiny piece of territory. Stone Talon Mountains were previously a modest series of hills affording a nice view to the ocean waves towards the west. Sundering that tore apart the planet propelled massive sandstone cliffs and mountain summits far in the air. Water from the eastern shore surged into freshly constructed chasms and gorges. With the assistance of erosion from the Black Wolf River, the Stone Talon Mountains have developed into a huge network of canyons and cliffs openings that beckons adventurers and monsters alike to explore the virgin areas. The Stone Talons rise in central Calum south of Ashenville Forest and north of Desolus. The mountain range flows into a dismal plain of the barrens to the east. The atmosphere of the Stone Talon Mountains may best be characterized as severe. At the lower altitudes it is windy, hot and dry. It 
It is a harsh location where fruit cannot grow and flash foods are prevalent in the early summer months. Moisture from the ocean builds up into massive rain clouds, but the towering peaks are too high for the clouds to move inland. They slam on the mountain's western flank and dump tremendous sheets of water over the slopes to stream down into small gorges and back into the ocean or into a valley to dry out in a marshy sink. When the weather changes to rain, the earth gets slippery and gloomy. Walking on a slope or a cliff in the rain is perilous. Water seeps through the sandstone and threatens to send even cautious visitors plunging into their deaths. Oftentimes, when the clouds shed all their liquid, scorching breezes force them further up the hill, engulfing the storm town peak in a cloak of thunderous mist. An obvious aspect every visitor notices, apart from the high cliffs and deep crevices, is a continually blowing wind. Sometimes a moderate wind sweeps fresh air in from the seaside, and other times a powerful gale stirs up ferocious dust devils or brings a storm in from the western highlands. The rough mountains are home to numerous wild creatures and just a few civilization habitations. Hippogriffs roost at Merkfallon Lake in cave complexes high on the hillside. Their nests are protected by huge bramble hedgerows making entrance practically impossible without flying. Other species found throughout the mountains include striders, hyenas, kobolds, swoops, crack panthers and even rock elementals and the uncommon saber-toothed cat. Further up the stone talent peak on its eastern flank lie the chaotic region of the wyvern and drakes. These ancient flying lizards have long been contenders for the mastery of the sky. Every once in a while, when other races threaten to meddle, the two will lay aside their disagreements long enough to deal with the interlopers. Agents of the goblin-run venture company will also have been observed in the region hunting for prospective areas to deforest and streams, valuable metal to steal with their mining machinery. The mountains are notorious for their ill winds. <clears throat> the winds blow across Sontala mountains with considerable power, delaying travelers' progress and sending up clouds of grit and dust that may confound the greatest sense of direction. Small and weakly built persons have even been blown down a hillside by a particularly violent gale. The wind at Stonetala mountains never dip below moderate even on a quiet day and may shift from a constant breeze to a severe gale without notice. And that is the story of the Stone Talent Mountains. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.